all right, so it's a 3D model and it's been simplified down to what matters when you're drawing. That's really cool, right? That's pretty useful. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What is this? <laughs> that was the sound of my brain exploding, thinking about how useful this is gonna be for you learning figure drawing because each part of this simplified model, including the shoulder blades, you can rotate independent of the other parts. So why does that matter? So here I have a slug and it's very squashy and stretchy, but it doesn't have much solid form to it. And quite often when people start to learn figures, you know, we have skin and we have fat and we have soft muscle tissue. And so it kind of feels like the human figure is a little bit slug-like or people kind of start ending up drawing it almost like it's got this kind of structure to it. Once you can start to see the human figure more like an ant, where an ant has these solid forms, right? And they don't feel very flexible. Uh, but what we do is we think about the ant in terms of these three forms and its main, main body. And then you can, if the ant turned towards us, we go, okay, so here's the head part, here's the middle bit, and here's the bit at the back, and we'd overlap them. Or maybe, you know, they would create different angles with each other and we would just be moving apart, moving around these three parts rather than thinking of the figure like this big, soft, squashy blob. If you can start to first see the figure in like an ant and then we'll start to see the squashing and the stretching after that, that whole thing is a total game changer for your figure drawing and it's something I talk about a lot on this channel. So let's see this 3D model in action with a real pose. So first off, we're gonna try and recreate this pose in terms of these simple forms. So I'll switch it to the female version of the model. And first, I'm gonna think about the rib cage. So the first thing that I look at on the model, the actual human model, not the 3D model, is the middle of the collarbones right here, the line down the middle of the chest, right? Very easy to see. We don't need x-ray vision, we don't need expertise for that. I'm gonna come over to the 3D model now and I'm gonna try to replicate that angle. I think it's actually turned a little bit uh, to the side, just a little bit. Like if I look at the model, I can see some of this side of her and I can't see that on this side. So I feel like it's rotated around just a little bit. And next, I think I'm gonna try and match the head. Now the head is turned back this way, but also is looking down a little bit. Now it feels like it's a little bit too far off to the side. So I'm gonna to switch to the move mode and I'm gonna just move it across a little bit like that. Maybe just down, I'm not exactly sure, but this is, this is roughly what I think is happening in this pose. And it's not perfect, but pretty good. Okay, so I wanna do the pelvis next. The pelvis right now, like if I draw where the pelvis is, it's over here. So I really need to move it across so I'm gonna do that now, I'm gonna move it across. But the model is still on the wrong angle. And so I can just look at the sort of red underpants there and see that it needs to rotate a bit. Okay, so I'm gonna just rotate it around like this to try and match what I'm seeing there. So that looks pretty good. I might just adjust it a little bit there and maybe even move it more to the left like that. Okay, great. And then the last thing is the shoulders. So it just looks to me like this shoulder is a little bit raised. So if I just get this shoulder, I'm just gonna raise it a little bit, not much. I don't think it's raised very much. That looks like about the angle because we're just looking for this kind of angle. And I just wanna double check the pelvis because I've pushed it across to the left. And I think that the, the edge of the pelvis is like here, the edge of the rib cage is here. It looks like on the model, I've pushed the pelvis across a little bit too far because if I bring down like a vertical line from here, from this side of the rib cage, you know, from this side of the torso up here, the pelvis is sticking out here. But on my 3D model, it's not sticking out that far. But I'm not gonna move it back because I wanna move the pelvis more than it, move it across more than it really is. I kind of need to exaggerate these things that are happening in the pose. I don't have to, but I like to, because quite often your drawing needs to go further than real life to really capture the pose. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with this configuration. If I can see the 
this in a model, I have pretty much cracked the hardest part of figure drawing. So now I'm going to draw the figure in terms of these forms. Now, when I was drawing this, I wasn't looking at this model. I was looking at the pose, but I've done a lot of practice and I've gotten good at just seeing these ideas in the 3D model in actual poses. So if you see what I've already got here, right at the start, all I've done is map out, I didn't even draw the rib cage. Uh, this is a simplified rib cage in the 3D model, but I drew it even simpler here. And then I did the head shape and now that pelvis location being off to the left. What I've drawn here is one of the most important skills in figure drawing. And if you can get this, everything else is gonna be so much easier. Because now I have the rib cage and pelvis in place, I've got the gesture pretty much nailed down. I could, all I need to do is show the squashing and stretching of the midsection between the two, which is really simple as you'll see. Then I'm gonna add on just two lines for the collarbones. I've already placed the head. All right, let's see what happens next. So I place those collarbones there. You see just two lines, one coming across, one is slightly diagonal, at, uh, going upwards. And then I'm trying to figure out the squash and stretch of the midsection between the rib cage and the pelvis. And so when it comes to adding on the limbs, it's relatively straightforward. I do have to know a little bit about shoulders, admittedly, in order to add those on. But once I get to the arms, it's just these tapering shapes, maybe some cylindrical shapes if they're foreshortened. And for the hips and thighs, because I put in that pants shape, it's very easy to place the uh, hips and thighs into the opening that the pants create, right? Okay, so then I'm gonna look at the pose, squint, see the big simple shadow shapes and build those up. And so from there, I just keep going and keep going. And then here's the final result. Let's do it again with one more pose. So one more pose very quickly. It's really useful to just get lots of repetitions of seeing this. So if we go to the middle of the collarbones, come down the middle of the chest here, I can see the angle that the rib cage is at. I can also see that I can see a little bit of the far side of the torso, but I can see a lot on the near side, like it's turned away from our eyes like that. So we're gonna turn the rib cage like this, you know, cause we're looking from this three quarter angle. And then it seems like it's kind of leaning back a little bit and then maybe just kind of leaning towards us a bit too. So I don't think I have that perfect, but it doesn't need to be perfect. This is good enough. All right. What's interesting here is look at how the arch on the rib cage, like coming down to the bottom, look at how that's coming down on the 3D model. I wasn't really looking at that part of the human model. I was just looking at the middle of the chest. But look, if we look at that, you see how it's coming down. We can see that is happening here. Look, it's jutting out. That bone at the bottom of the rib cage is jutting out right here. We can see it pushing out. A little bit harder to see on the near side, but once we can visualize the 3D model in our head, which is not that much to learn and remember, certainly not as much as the whole figure, right? It's a lot simpler. Once we can visualize that, we can see what's happening. Look, there's the rib cage coming down there. I wouldn't be able to see that unless I had practiced with this idea that you see in the 3D model. Now, I didn't learn this with the 3D model because we just made it, but man, it's so much easier to visualize this way. Okay, so now, how about the pelvis? All right, so again, in this model is like wearing these underpants, which is really useful. And when it's a nude figure and there's no underpants, you can visualize underpants to help with this. But what we're gonna do is just try and match what's happening there. Now, a big thing here is we need to shift them to the left, right? Whoops, like this. Right, because what we want to do is roughly match. So this is the kind of edge of the hips. We want to match this diagonal coming from the rib cage to the edge of the hips. So we've got that. And then we also want to match the way it's obviously pushing out on this side, like it's coming across to the left. Okay, great. So next, what about the head? The head already looks kind of right. 
I don't know if I have to do much to the head. Maybe it's like, I don't know, maybe just a tiny adjustment. It didn't really make much difference. Uh, but then on the shoulders, you know, this one looks about right. It's kind of flat like this. But the far side one here is raised up. Now, I can't exactly see. I don't have x-ray vision again. But it's like, it's just on a diagonal. It's raised up. That's what I can see. All right. So I think that this is about correct, roughly speaking. And so if I can match that, and I don't even have to draw it, you know, in a fancy or sophisticated way. If I can just kind of go, that's roughly the rib cage egg shape. There's the middle of the chest, but then here's the pelvis, something like this, the kind of pants shape of the pelvis. Then here, I don't have to draw the whole shoulder blade, I just draw a line and then another one up going diagonal because that's raised. And then I'm like, okay, and then the head, I think is, you know, something like this. So I'm not, I'm not drawing in a fancy way here. From there, all I would then need to be able to do is add this bit of midsection stretching between the rib cage and the pelvis. This side squashing between the rib cage and the pelvis. And then the legs and hips will just slot right in there because the pants shape, it has these kind of openings, right, for the legs, so it's ready-made for us. And then I'm gonna have the shoulders stretching up to the raised one. It doesn't have to stretch up on the low one. And then even if I don't really, you know, make much effort with the arms and stuff like that, if I just draw like the hand as a sort of ball shape, maybe with a finger, and then like there's the forearm, I'm starting to get the gesture of this figure and the structure and like a, if this was my initial light sketch, I would be, I would be halfway there. Like I don't have to get the proportions of everything perfect. I just need to get the proportions of the simple forms in the 3D model about right. I don't need to get all the angles and everything perfect. I just need to get the relationship between these simple forms about right. And in order to be able to see them, I just needed first to be able to see the middle of the collarbones and the line down the middle of the chest. And then from there, visualize the rib cage based on this 3D model. And I just need to get good at visualizing this. And then I can transfer it to the figure. So this is gonna be really, really useful for making YouTube videos for, you know, that I make for you guys in the future because I'll be able to show this to you much more clearly. If you want to be able to play around with this model and find poses and match them with this model, this is gonna, this model I'm making available to all our study group members and it's basically gonna be at the heart of our new course which is Figure Foundations and that is starting in November. You can see the details for it below and so if you actually want to interact with this model and use it to help you with this learning, you can check out that course. But whether or not you join that, having these simple forms and being able to rotate them in your mind is such a powerful tool, is really gonna accelerate the way that you draw figures. So I really recommend starting to think about figures, you know, more like the ant first, before, rather than thinking about it like that slug form, right? So I hope that that helps uh, in case you want to check out another video which builds on these ideas. There's one up on the screen right now. And until next time, happy drawing.